Hello and welcome to February's Flix Flix, the film and event magazine programme brought to you by Picturehouse Cinemas. My name's Flick and coming up on this month's show, Sean the Sheep from the makers of Wallace and Gromit and Chicken Run, the second best exotic marigold hotel, Judy Dench and Bill Nye, quite simply, cinema's biggest draw. Fifty Shades of Grey, yes, but is it tasteful? Love is Strange, John Lithgow and Alfred Molina, yes please! And Flix Picks, my roundup of special screenings and live performances across the group. Like Pixar, Aardman can do no wrong. Even when straying from their comfort zone with the likes of Arthur Christmas, they are still only swaying slightly left of genius, and that's a matter of opinion. With Shaun the Sheep, they totally own their comedic, stop-motion corner of England and triumph yet again with a story both hilarious and poignant, full of love, detail, and a Britishness that transcends itself and has become as popular in Beijing as it is in Birmingham. Through bars, barks, rolls of eyes, and something of the Clint Eastwood adage, don't just do something, stand there, a communication between dog, sheep, human and audience is established seemingly so easily. This is always Ardman's triumph through its brain-meltingly infinitesimal attention to every nuance of script, character, scene and shop front. Our hearts swell that someone has pushed the boat out so far on our behalf. Ardman Animations, the creators of Wallace and Gromit and Chicken Run, present... A Great Escape to the City. <laughs> Sean the Sheep, the movie. <laughs> to talk about the second best exotic Marigold Hotel, we had better address the unbelievable success of the first. Come and spend your autumn years in an Indian palace. Arches and canopied balconies. It's a luxury development where all the residents are in their golden years. Like the Costa Brava. Yeah, but with more elephants. It made $135 million worldwide and was the most successful independent British film of 2012. The success also reflects the demands of the over 45s as cinema's biggest growing audience over the slightly dwindling and ever elusive youth market. Bill Nye, Judy Dench, Maggie Smith and Celia Imrie are pretty much guaranteed draws for the target audience and are joined on this foray by American silver fox Richard Gere. Lordy, Lord, have mercy on my ovaries. <laughs> the second installation in this potential franchise does have a story to hang its stars on, which is the opening of Sonny, Dev Patel's second hotel. This is clashing badly with his wedding plans and the smooth running of his first hotel, managed by Muriel, Maggie Smith. An unexpected twist, will they, won't they, Dench and Nye, and director John Madden make this an intriguing return to Jaipur. Hello, Douglas. Hello, Evelyn. I couldn't resist the chance to come out and visit the old crumbling ruins and see how the hotel was doing as well. <laughs> From director, artist and OBE, Sam Taylor Johnson, Nowhere Boy, comes the film adaptation of the literary erotic phenomenon Fifty Shades of Grey by E.L. James. The three volumes have sold in excess of 100 million copies worldwide, topped every bestseller list and translated into 52 languages. But is it any good? Seems to be one of the most frequently asked questions of readers of the book. It certainly has its critics, but despite this, it has tapped into a rich vein of female sexual exploration that is being grasped by a broad spectrum of women, ranging from teens to middle age. The two stars are interesting choices, Dakota Johnson, 21 Jump Street, and Jamie Dornan, Marie Antoinette, 
both credible and cool. The film's release for Valentine's Day is pushing the film towards a romantic bent as opposed to a pornographic one. Also, having a female director, scriptwriter and author are the more telling features of this film. Women taking control and presenting what has always traditionally been presented to us by men. Whatever the extremes this film may go to, one thing is for sure, it's going to be huge, it's going to be watched by a lot of women and it could well represent a new dawn for female sexual representation in the movies. I don't know if I can be with him the way he needs me to. Say I did stay. What would happen? From director Ira Sachs comes Love is Strange, starring Alfred Molina as Ben and John Lithgow as George. That day when you announced you were getting married, word got out to the archdiocese on Facebook of all places. You have to understand that... Understand what? You've all known this whole time that Ben and I have been living together. The decision is effective immediately. They live in New York, have been in a relationship for 40 years and finally legally get married. As soon as they do, Ben is fired from his job at Catholic school and the couple face the horrific plight of being homeless and broke. Relying on the kindness of friends and relatives who can put them up separately during this rough time, the title of the film unfolds. It's a romantic comedy, a poignant drama about age, an observation on New York and how people will live on a couch to stay there and a familial exploration of what can be endured. With the marvellous Marissa Tomei providing support, we are presented with a funny, unsentimental yet beautiful and compassionate journey into the age-old question, what is love? Sorry, don't be silly. Life has its obstacles. But love does not delight in injustice. It rejoices with the truth. For all these years. For all these years. Amazing. <laughs> And now Flix Picks, my roundup of live performances and special screenings this month. On Sunday the 8th of February, Richard Linklater's Boyhood. Shot over a 12 year period, it has been nominated for numerous Oscars. Whether you missed it the first time around or just want to relive the experience, the return of Boyhood is not to be missed. Our popular vintage Sunday strand returns with a one-off Valentine's special on Sunday the 15th of February. Breakfast at Tiffany's is the charming adaptation of Truman Capote's novel set in an idealised early 1960s New York. Audrey Hepburn stars as Manhattan good time girl Holly Golightly, whose burgeoning relationship with her neighbour Paul is complicated by revelations from her past. And now onto the stage on Wednesday the 11th, live from the Royal Shakespeare Company, Love's Labour's Lost. A reimagining by director Christopher Luscombe and transposed to a splendid country house in 1914. This production is part of a season of performances from the RSC to mark the centenary of the First World War. On the 14th, a live double bill from the New York Met. Tchaikovsky's enchanting fairy tale, Iolanta, sees soprano Anna Netrebko portray another Tchaikovsky heroine following her success last month in Eugene Onegin. And Nadia Michael is the unwitting victim of the diabolical Bluebeard, played by Mikhail Petrenko in Bartok's psychological thriller, Duke Bluebeard's Castle. On the 24th, live from the Royal Opera House, Der Fliegende Hollander is Wagner's first masterpiece that explores the themes of damnation and redemption that would fascinate the composer throughout his career. Acclaimed conductor Andris Nelsons returns to steer the orchestra through Wagner's stormy score. That's it for February. Check out our website for more information on all our upcoming films and live stage productions. Pick up a free copy of Picture House Recommends at your local venue or download it to your iPad. Our Facebook, Twitter feed and blog will keep you up to date too. Thank you for watching and see you again in March.